Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this uh, tutorial series on thermodynamics. So, in this uh, tutorial, I mean, uh, in in previous tutorials, I covered the following um, following things. So, we basically see we have uh, seen the air standard assumptions and air standard cycles. Then we have seen the Carnot cycle, Otto cycle, Diesel cycle, and in the last tutorial, we solved some of the problems of the Beton cycle, right? So, we will continue from that and we will take up more problem on Beton cycle and uh, thereafter we will go towards the exergy analysis of uh, gas power cycles. Okay. So, to begin with uh, today's first tutorial problem is given here. So, in a Breton cycle the ambient conditions limit the minimum temperature T1 and the metallurgical uh, limit for the turbine blade dictates the maximum temperature. So, let us say the maximum temperature is T3. So, T1 is the ambient temperature right? and T3 is the maximum temperature that is governed by the metallurgical consideration of the turbine blade because above that the turbine blade may not be withstand that high temperature and it will uh, fail. So, for fixed values of T1 and T3 uh, here we are interested to determine the optimum pressure ratio that is Rp which gives the maximum work in a Beton cycle. right? So, it is R subscript P like the, this is the optimum pressure ratio which will give the maximum work output from a Breton cycle. right? So, we begin with this. So, in, in the previous class we have seen how to draw the TS diagram. So, basically uh, for a Breton cycle you have uh, 1 to 2 is an isentropic compression process and then you have 2 to 3 which is a constant pressure heat addition process, then 3 to 4 is an isentropic expansion in a turbine and then 4 to 1 is basically your uh, heat rejection at constant pressure. So, these are the 4 steps and this is the T1 temperature and this is your T3 that is the maximum temperature. right? So, Rp is basically the pressure ratio which is nothing but pressure uh, let us say. So, this is the lower pressure so, P 1 is equal to P 4 right? because it is a constant pressure process and here this is the maximum pressure that is P 2 equal to P 3 and this ratio of uh, P 2 and P 1 is basically the pressure ratio. So, we are interested in finding the maximum work output from a Beton cycle and uh, that corresponding optimum pressure ratio we need to find. Okay? So, here we will find, so this is the heat addition process as we know. So, Q in is the amount of heat that is added in this cycle which is nothing but Cp times T3 minus T2 that is the temperature difference and uh, this is the heat that is rejected Q out. So, Q out is nothing but Cp into T4 minus T1. Okay. So, in this cycle then therefore, the net work delivered is basically Q in minus Q out and if you do Q in minus Q out then you will get C p T 3 minus T 2 minus C p T 4 minus T 1. So, interesting to uh, note in this uh, in this problem we are assuming constant specific heat C p and uh, usually C p is not a is, is not a constant it changes with temperature, but we are assuming C p. So, it is a cold air standard assumption that we are making. Okay. So, eventually I can write it as C p and uh, this one I can write it as T3 minus T4 and then I can write T2 minus T1. So, I am just rearranging this little bit and then I can write it as Cp. I will take T3 as a factor and then I will get uh, T4 upon T3 and similarly I will take T1 as a factor and then I will get T2 upon T1 minus 1. Okay. Next is that we know that T 2 upon T 1 is basically P 2 upon P 1 to the power of 
k minus 1 upon k right. Similarly, we know T 3 upon T 4 is nothing but P 3 upon P 4 power of k, 1, k minus 1 by k. So, k is the ratio of the specific heat and we know P 2 upon P 1 is nothing but R P. So, I can write it like this and P 3 upon P 4 is 1 over R P right. So, this is 1 over R P to the power of k minus 1 by k right because P 4 is P 1 and P 3 is P 2. So, right. So, I think this is P 3 P 3 is basically P 2 and P 4 is basically P 1. So, it is again uh, R p to the power of k minus 1 by k right. Now, if I substitute it, uh, it back here, so I will get um, network right that should be equal to C p times T 3 and 1 minus T 4 upon T 3 which can be written as 1 minus 1 by R p to the power of k minus 1 over k and they can here minus t 1 and t 2 upon t 1 is nothing but r p to the power of k minus 1 upon k minus 1. Okay. So, so that is the expression. Now, to determine the optimum pressure ratio that gives the maximum work in a Breton cycle, we need to find the derivative of work done with respect to r p. Right? So, here we are uh, uh, interested in finding the optimum pressure ratio. So, we have to calculate this derivative and for maximum work work done we have to uh, basically set it to 0 and that should be equal to now I will take the derivative of this. So, it is um, C p T 3 and here I have to take a derivative of this R p. So, it is uh, it will be uh, uh, this factor will come out. So, which is uh, 1 minus k upon k okay, and this will be R p to the power of 1 minus 2 k upon k. Okay. So, here has to be a minus sign. Then we have the second term which is minus C p t 1. So, it is minus C p t 1. Here it will be k minus 1 upon k and then derivative of this will give you R p to the power of minus 1 by k. Right. So, you just check this calculation, I, I have just I have written it here. So, this is the derivative of work done with respect to R p, now we have to equate it to 0 and then from this we can find out. Uh, so, the next step would be I can just write it T 3 k minus 1 upon k that should be equal and then multiplied by R p to the power of 1 minus 2 k upon k that should be equal to T 1 k minus 1 upon k and here you have R p to the power of minus 1 upon k. So, this is the uh, step that you will get uh, after equating it to 0 and uh, I do not have sufficient space here. So, I will move into the next slide. So, basically what I am trying to do I will calculate the uh, I will I, I need to find R p. Okay. So, this is uh, this R p we can solve from this and uh, if you see then next step will be T 3 upon T 1 should be equal to R p to the power of 2 times k minus 1 upon k. Okay. So, just a simple uh, algebra you have to do and then you will uh, basically basically this cancels from both sides. So, remaining thing we have to just uh, write it accordingly. So, this is the ratio of temperatures and then eventually we can solve for R p. So, R p will be nothing but T 3 upon T 1 to the power of k upon 2 by k minus 1 right. So, this is the optimum pressure ratio right. This is the optimum pressure ratio. that gives you the maximum uh, maximum w net network output okay so what is the maximum network output that you can just substitute this value of rp into this expression of w net then you can find out what is the maximum amount of work output just substitute rp here then you will be able to calculate that part so that i am not doing in this tutorial Okay. So, this this is the answer. Okay. 
So, I will now move to this uh, move to the next problem, but uh, what is important to note that so if you know what is the temperature of your cycle. So, T 1 is the ambient temperature which is pretty much around 300 Kelvin and T 3 is the temperature. So, if you want to increase the maximum work output then uh, basically you have to uh, increase this value T 3. So, then basically you are increasing the pressure ratio and uh, that can give you the maximum work output from the cycle. Okay. But this temperature T 3 is limited from the metallurgical consideration because the turbine blade may not be able to withstand the high temperature after the combustion. So, therefore, uh, we have to see that what what is the temperature of the that, that the turbine blade can withstand. Nowadays, there are several advanced materials that is coming and with the coating of the silicon carbide etcetera, we can achieve a higher temperature even. Okay. So, the next problem is an again an ideal beton cycle, but here we have two stage compression and with intercooling between pressure limits P 1 and P 2. Okay. So, uh, P 1 and P 2 are the lowest and the highest pressure of the cycle air enters the first stage at, at a pressure P 1 and temperature T 1 and leaves at an intermediate pressure P. Okay. So, this P is an intermediate pressure which is basically, so basically P is less than P 2 and it is greater than P 1 right. Okay. Air is cooled in a constant pressure process to the original temperature T 1. So, after the first stage of compression from P 1 to P that air is cooled back to the original temperature T 1. Then the air is compressed in the second stage to a higher pressure that is P 2. Now, for fixed values of P 1 and P 2 and temperature T 1, what is the optimum value of the intermediate pressure that we need to find. Okay. So, we need to find out the optimum value of the intermediate pressure which will minimize the work input to the compressor. Okay. So, here it is a two stage compressor with an intercooling. So, if I have to draw the diagram, so, so there will be basically a first compressor and then the second compressor. So, I am uh, I, just drawing the T s diagram only for the compressor here. So, let us say 1 to 2 is the first stage of compression, then what is done that we cool it back to the original temperature that is initial temperature that is T 1 and this is the third point. Okay. So, this is the intercooling and again we are compressing it to another temperature and uh, another pressure. right? So, this is, uh, so I am just drawing the curves. Okay. So, this is the pre uh, P 1, okay. this is P equal to P 1 curve. So, this is a constant pressure line, this is P equal to P 2 curve and uh, this curve is basically your P equal to capital P that is the intermediate pressure. Okay. So, this is the intermediate pressure. So, 1 to 2 is the first compressor, 2 to 3 is the intercooling and 3 to 4 is the second compressor. Okay. So, now we need to find out the optimum pressure ratio that will minimize the work input to the uh, to the compressor. Okay. So, what I have to do? Uh, we can start with uh, this problem and uh, we know that work done in a compressor. Okay. So, let us say, so this is the first stage of comp first compressor. So, work done is basically it is a negative one because it is done on this compressor uh, done on. So, it is that expression it is R T 1 K upon K minus 1 and then we have P upon P 1 power of k minus 1 by k minus 1. Right? We know that for an isentropic uh, process, isentropic compression process, so this is the compressor compression work okay, that we already know. Now, similarly we can find what is the, the work done in the second stage of compressor. Okay? So, I am writing w dot 2, I think dot may not be needed because uh, this is not per unit of time. So, W 2 is a work done in the second compressor. Let me write W 1 C and W 2 C. Okay. So, W 2 C will be again R T 3, but T 3 is equal to T 1. So, I am writing T 1 K upon K minus 1 and then here the pressure ratio will be P 2 
upon p k minus 1 upon k minus 1. So, this is the work done in the second compressor. So, the total work done of the compressor we can find it as so let us say minus. So, I have to basically add this 2 up and then this will be r t 1 k upon k minus 1. So, this is a common factor in both of them. So, what I have is p upon p 1 to the power of k minus 1 upon k plus p 2 upon p power of k minus 1 upon k minus 2. Okay. So, that is the total work done. So, now to find out the optimum pressure ratio again like the previous problem we will take a derivative of this work done with respect to with respect to p here right. Okay. So, that should be equal to r t 1 k k minus 1. Now, I will take the derivative. So, it will be k minus 1 upon k p upon p 1 to the power of minus 1 upon k plus the second term will be um, again k minus 1 upon k. Okay, so, 1 over p 1 factor I forgot to write wrote uh, forgot to write the second one will be k minus 1 upon k and then I have to take a derivative of this. So, that will be uh, p 2 upon p to the power of minus 1 upon k. Now, I have to take the derivative of this with respect to p. So, it will be minus p 2 over p square. Okay. So, I will end the bracket here. So, that is the derivative you please carefully do it when you practice and then this should be equal to 0. So, this will uh, give us the optimum pressure right? Uh, that will minimize the work input. So, now if I uh, from this expression if I solve then I will get 1 upon p 1. So, basically k minus 1 upon k is a factor again we can take it out. So, whatever will remain is 1 upon p 1 multiplied by p upon p 1 to the power of minus 1 upon k and uh, this term will become p 2 upon p square and this is p 2 upon p to the power of minus 1 upon k that should be equal to 0. Okay. So, from this we can simplify and we can find what is p. So, p to the power of 2 times k minus 1 upon k that should be equal to p 1 p 2 uh, and then this is a, a power of k minus 1 upon k. Okay. Just uh, we have to rearrange it and then we will get this. Now, uh, from this whatever we can see that k minus 1 upon k can be cancelled from both side. So, what we get is p square is equal to p 1 by p, p 1 times p 2. Okay. So, therefore, this optimum pressure should be equal to square root of product of these two pressure. So, if you take p 1 and p 2 and then take a product and then the square root of that will give you the optimum pressure ratio. Okay. So, this optimum pressure ratio will minimize the work input to the compressor. Okay. Now, what is the work input to the compressor that can be find by substituting this optimum pressure back into this expression and then that will give us the uh, net work uh, input to the compressor I mean the total work input to the compressor uh, for this optimum pressure ratio. Right. Okay. So, this problem uh, is uh, so suppose uh, I mean now you can go on increasing the number of uh, uh, steps in the compressor and then you can see that how the optimum pressure ratio will change. Okay. So, here for two stretch compression you have to take a square root. Now, if you have three stretch compression then you have to uh, take a cube root. Okay. Right. There will be three steps of compression and each uh, each compression step the pressure ratio will be the same. Okay. Will be same. So, here also the each compression ratio uh, for example, the first compressor the pressure ratio will be this p optimum by p 1. Okay. And the second one it will be p 2 upon p optimum. Okay. So, that will remain the same. So, with this concept now we can try to solve this third problem. 
So, it is a similar problem, but here the we have to obtain the thermal efficiency of an ideal gas turbine cycle that is having a degeneration, reheating and intercooling with two stages of compression and expansion. Okay. So, the minimum temperature of the cycle is given, so that is T1 that is 10 degree centigrade or 283 Kelvin and the maximum temperature is also given that is T3 which is 600 degree centigrade means 873 Kelvin and the overall pressure ratio that is, um, so it is basically two stage. So, let us say this is the overall, so R p overall that is given 16. Okay. Now, compare the thermal efficiency, uh, so this, this is the first part. So, what we have to do? We have to find out the thermal efficiency of an ideal gas turbine cycle. So, here what is, uh, uh, so here basically we have, we have two stages of compression and expansion, right. So, it is model, it is similar to the previous problem, but here we will consider the entire cycle. So, if I draw the T s diagram for this, so 1 to 2 is basically first stage of compression, 2 to 3 is intercooling, 3 to 4 is second stage of compression and 4 to, let us say 4 to uh, So, here we have a regeneration. So, let us say uh, if it is an ideal regeneration, then uh, we will see. So, this is the maximum temperature after after uh, after the heat addition and then 6 to 7 is uh, your first stage of expansion, 7 to 8 is reheating and 8 to 9 is your second stage of expansion and then 9 to 1 is the heat rejection. But uh, what is important that we have regeneration, so there will be one part of heat that will be used for the regeneration purpose. So that is basically if I assume that the efficiency of the heat exchanger is 1 100 percent, then I can uh, equate this T 9 to T 5 basically, right. So this point and this point temperature is same, okay. and uh, this point and this point the temperature should be the same. Okay. So, 9 to 10 is the heat rejection from the hot gases okay, which is received by the compressed gas and it is being warmed up from 4 to 5. So, that is the preheating of the compressed air and 5 to 6 is the heat addition in the, uh, this is the heat addition in, uh, in, in the combustor and this is the second stage right of the before the second stage of turbine, this is another heat addition right and uh, this 10 to 1 is the heat rejection. Okay. So, this is the overall T s diagram for this. Now, uh, the pressure ratio across, across each stage is not given. So, what I will do? I will, uh, we know already that the pressure ratio for the two stage compression, the optimum pressure ratio should be square root of uh, overall pressure ratio. right? So, that is if you look at the previous example, it was P 1 times P 2, right. So, here basically the overall pressure ratio is given. So, overall pressure ratio is nothing but, so here it is not P 2, here it will be P 4, right. Okay. So, overall pressure ratio is nothing but P 4 that is the maximum pressure of the cycle divided by P 1. Okay. So, I can, so this is the pressure ratio of each stage. Okay. So, I am just writing S, R P subscript S. So, first stage, second stage like that. Okay. So, here I can just replace this one. So, P 1 is uh, not, uh, I mean P 4 is nothing but P 1 times R P overall. right? So, what I will get is, uh, it is basically, so the ambient air we are assuming at coming at one atmospheric pressure. Or, or basically I can take this uh, P, P 1 as common and then P 1 can come out of the square root and then I have square root of 16. Okay. So, this is the intermediate pressure not the pressure ratio of the stage. So, that is the intermediate pressure here what is the intermediate pressure that is basically P 2 okay. 
and that is again equal to P3 because 2 to 3 is a constant pressure uh, heat rejection. Okay. So, what I will get is square root of 16 is 4 times P1. So, what is the pressure ratio across the first stage? So, pressure ratio of the first stage is nothing but P2 upon P1, okay, which is so P2 is equal to 4 P1. So, P2 is equal to 4 P1. So, you get the pressure ratio of the first stage is 4. Similarly, pressure ratio of the second stage you can find is as 4. Okay. I am not doing, you can just check it. Okay, so, that, that is uh, uh, that, uh, so this is the pressure ratio. Now, what we have to do? We have to compare the, thera, I mean we have to find out the thermal efficiency of this cycle. Okay. So, now uh, we can calculate the temperature at the end of compression process. So, let us say temperature at the end of compression process which is T2 and that should be again equal to T4. Okay. So, this can be found as T1 to the power of R P 1 to the power of K minus 1 upon K. right? So, here we are basically uh, taking the temperature T 1 is 283 Kelvin and this pressure ratio is 4 and K is basically 1.4. Okay. We are assuming constant specific heat at room temperature. So, K is 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.4. So, from this we can find temperature after compression. So, basically T2 is equal to T4 and that temperature is 420.5 Kelvin. Okay. Next I can find what is the temperature after the expansion. Okay. So, T7 is equal to T9 okay, as you can see here and that will be equal to T6 multiplied by 1 over Rp. Okay. So, R p is basically 4. Okay. So, power of k minus 1 upon k. So, T 6 is, so this is T, T 6 not T 3. T 6 is equal to T 8, okay. that is 873 Kelvin and the pressure ratio is 1 over 4 k minus 1 upon k k is 1.4. So, you can calculate T 7 and T 9 which is 587.5 Kelvin. So, this is the temperature at the exit of the first turbine and the second turbine. Now, we can find out the heat input and the heat output. Okay. So, heat input Q in, uh, I can write Q in, Q in is basically 5 to 6. Uh, plus 7 to 8, right. So, I can write it as Cp times T6 minus T5 plus Cp times T8 minus T7. Now, T8 is equal to T6 and T7 equal to T5. So, this is simply a product of 2. So, now I can write Cp as 1.005 T6 minus T5, right. T6 we found as, I mean it is given as 873 Kelvin and T5 is nothing but T9, okay. If you look at the diagram, it is very clear. So, I can just uh, write 587.5 Kelvin and then heat added is 573.9 kilojoule per kg. And then that is the heat addition and what is the heat rejection? So, heat is rejected between, uh, I mean here, right, T 10 to T 1, right. So, uh, and that, that should be equal to, uh, so basically T 10 C p multiplied by T 10 minus T 1 okay. and another heat is rejection is taking place between 2 to 3 right in the intercooler. So, plus C p times T 2 minus T 3. Now, uh, by construction you can see that T 2 is equal to T 10 and T 3 is equal to T 1 right. So, I can write it as 2 times C p T 10 minus T 1. Now, what is T 10? T 10 is nothing but T 4 or T 2 whatever. So, I can just write it as T 2. Okay. So, here it is 2 into 1.005 and T 2 is 420.5 and T 1 is 283 Kelvin. So, that's, that will give us uh, the heat rejection which is 276 
0.4 kJ per kg. Now when we know the heat in and heat output, we can calculate the thermal efficiency of the cycle which is nothing but 1 minus Q out divided by Q in. Just plug these numbers and you can calculate the efficiency as 51.8 percent. So, that is the efficiency of this uh, gas turbine cycle with two stages of compression. So, I am not going to do the next part, next part says that to compare the thermal efficiency with another gas turbine cycle with regeneration, reheating and intercooling, but here you have three stages of compression and expansion. right? So, here basically we have two stages, now there will be another stage of compression and, and expansion okay? and uh, with the same of overall pressure ratio, right? overall pressure ratio is 16 and the maximum and minimum temperature is also kept same. So, we have to find out the thermal efficiency of the second cycle. So, what we have to do? We have to calculate the pressure ratio across each stage of compressor and the turbine. Okay? So, as I was discussing in the previous uh, uh, problem that that pressure ratio Rp can be found as cube root of overall pressure ratio. Right? So, R, so, overall pressure ratio is given. So, this is the, over, the pressure ratio of each stage. Now, here it will be cube root okay? because there are three stages of compression and three stages of expansion. Okay. So, which is nothing but 16 to the power of 1, one third and that can be calculated as 2.52. Okay. Now, with this if you draw the T s diagram and then you have to find, find out the temperature, uh, uh, temperature uh, like after each compression. right? So, there will be T 2 equal to T 4 and then there will be another point here. Okay. So, temperature after the compression that you have to find and similarly temperature after the uh, expansion you have to find just like T 7 and T 9 whatever we found here you have to find it again. Then you can calculate the total amount of heat input to the cycle and the total amount of heat output of the cycle and then from that you can calculate the thermal efficiency based on this formula. Okay. So, I am not going to do this, but what you can uh, I am just giving you some intermediate uh, numbers. So, temperature after the compression temperature after the compression will be 368.5 Kelvin. Okay. So, this is the temperature after each stage of compression. Now, temperature after expansion will be again the same after expansion. So, temperature after each stage of expansion and that temperature is 670.4 Kelvin. So, you can find out that heat input to the cycle which should be uh, 610.8 kilojoule per kg and uh, heat rejection from the cycle that should be equal to 257.8 kilojoule per kg. Okay. So, based on that you can calculate the thermal efficiency. Now, here we will get 57.8 percent. So, what you see that if you are adding another stage of compression and expansion, your thermal efficiency has increased from 51.8 percent uh, to 57.8 percent. Okay. Now, what does it mean? So, if you keep on increasing the number of stages of compression and expansion, you will basically keep on increasing the thermal efficiency okay, and your cycle will tend to reach the uh, thermal efficiency of a Carnot cycle. Okay. So, that is the theoretical limit and uh, if you uh, add n number of stages of compression and expansion, you will eventually achieve towards the Carnot cycle efficiency. Okay. But this is very highly impractical in a, in a practical gas turbine combustor. So, therefore, we um, have probably uh, I mean in some, some of the application we can have uh, maximum two stages of compression or three stages of compression and not more than that. Okay. So, this will uh, bring us to the end of this uh, uh, tutorial problem. In the next uh, tutorial problem, uh, we are going to look at the exergy analysis of the of this cycle okay, of the gas power cycles. So, before that I will just quickly introduce to the theory of these cycles. Okay. So, so, we have to basically calculate the exergy and exergy destruction for both 
closed and steady flow systems okay these are already uh, you, you you have been already introduced to this concept in your theory class but i am just quickly review, reviewing this so the exergy uh, exergy destruction for a closed system that can be expressed as this t not uh, s gen okay so this is nothing but t not uh, delta s of the system minus entropy that is going in plus entropy which is coming out okay so i can write it as t not delta s system i can write it as so delta s of the system is basically the change of entropy in the system which i can write it as let us say there is a process which is basically going to 1 to 2 so s2 minus s1 is the change in entropy of the system and these are basically due to the heat interactions right so suppose there is a uh, thermal interaction so this is the uh, thermal energy that is going in the system and that temperature uh, corresponding to this temp, uh, heat transfer heat transfer is tb in okay so this is the entropy addition for that i mean and then this s out can be written as q out which is the heat lost from the system and the temperature at which, at which the heat is lost is basically T B out. Okay. So, this is the expression for the exergy destruction of a closed system. Okay. Now, T B in and T B out are the temperatures of the system boundary where heat is transferred into the system and out of the system. Right. So, suppose uh, you have a system here. Okay. So, at somewhere you are basically supplying Q in, at somewhere you are basically supplying Q out the temperature at this boundary is basically T B in and here the temperature is T B out. Okay. So, that is the concept. Okay. So, this is a closed system and uh, initially the entropy was S 1 and final entropy is S 2. So, S 2 minus S 1 is the change of entropy of this system and now there is also heat transfer across this system. So, Q in is the heat that is transferred to the system at a temperature T B i n. Okay and uh, q out is the temperature which is taken out at a temperature t b out right so then this entropy uh, that can be written in terms of q by t okay and then this is the exergy destruction during this process now a similar relation can be written for the steady flow system okay so exergy destruction for steady flow system so this can be written as this so t not s dot generation that can be written as t not times s dot out minus s dot in okay and this can be written as t not times product of mass transferred per unit time into the entropy now these are basically the out output okay and what whatever is input is m dot s in that is the inlet okay so this is uh, these are the entropy transfer and now there will be also heat transfer which can be written as q dot inlet divided by tb inlet plus q dot outlet tb outlet Okay. So, now, uh, so this is the exergy destruction for a steady flow system. Okay. Now, this also can be written in a unit mass basis uh, for a one inlet. So, unit mass basis for one inlet, one exit steady flow. system okay so if you have to write this then what then this expression can be written as exergy destruction 
that should be equal to T naught S gen that is equal to T naught AC minus SI. Okay. So, we are assuming the same amount of mass that is coming in, same amount of mass that is going out okay, minus Q in over T B in plus Q out over T B out. Okay, so, that is the exergy destruction for a uh, one inlet one exit steady flow system. Okay, so, this is based on unit mass. Now, we can also write exergy destruction for a uh, based on a unit mass if there is only heat transfer. Okay, so, then you can basically calculate you can just neglect this S 2 minus S 1 part here okay, and uh, whatever heat interactions are taking place that you can only consider. Okay. Now, exergy of closed system uh, phi and a fluid system psi at any state can be determined from, uh, from this relationships. So, first is that phi which is the which is for a closed system okay. exergy for closed system. So, that can be written as phi and phi is nothing but u minus u naught okay, minus t naught s minus s naught plus p naught v minus v naught plus capital V square by 2 plus g z. So, this, this is basically the kinetic energy and this is the potential energy. In most of the problems this can be neglected then you only remain with the thermodynamic properties. So, this is basically the difference, difference in the internal energy and this is the product of temperature surrounding temperature and the difference in entropy and this is the surrounding pressure and the difference in the uh, volume specific volume. Okay. So, subscript 0 refers to the state of the surroundings. Okay. surroundings. So, this is the exergy for a closed system and now uh, for an open system we usually denote it by psi and this can be written as h minus h naught minus t naught s minus s naught plus v square by 2 plus g z. So, this is for exergy for an open system. So, these are the useful uh, relationships that we need during the problem solving. So, we have to uh, this is just a quick refresh uh, refreshing of the, our knowledge whatever you have studied in the thermodynamics course. Okay. So, now with this we take up this problem. So, a simple Breton cycle with air as an working fluid operates at a pressure ratio of 10. Okay. So, again this is a Breton cycle pressure ratio is given as 10, air enters compressor at 22 degree centigrade and leaves turbine and, and turbine at 967 degree centigrade. So, this is uh, we can write it as T 1 is 295 Kelvin and T 3 is 967 uh, degree centigrade which is nothing but 1240 Kelvin. Okay. So, 967 is 1240 Kelvin. So, this is an uh, this is a simple Breton cycle and uh, what is given is the isentropic efficiencies of compressor and turbine right. So, yeah isentropic efficiency of the compressor and turbine are given. So, what I what we can do is that I can first draw the cycle diagram T s and uh, So, 1 to 2 is the compression process, so, 1 to 2 s is an isentropic process, 2 to 3 is the constant pressure heat addition, 3 to 4 is the expansion process in the turbine and 3 to 4 s is your isentropic process and 4 to 1 is the heat rejection step. Okay. So, eta compressor is 0.83 and eta turbine is 0.87, so these are given. Now, assuming variable specific heat, 
determine the exit temperature of the turbine ok. So, we have to find what is T 4 ok. So, T 4 we have to find and we have to find out the net work output. So, that is the W net and we have to find out the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So, I think we have solved similar problems in the previous tutorial uh, therefore, I am not going to uh, repeat the same things, but I will just uh, mention some of the uh, I mean some of the solution process of this first part and then I will go to the second part ok. So, basically you can find out different temperatures right. So, I am just writing the some uh, I am not solving this problem I am just writing some intermediate results ok. So, for an isentropic compression that is to your 1 to 2 s ok you know this thing. So, we are basically assuming the variable specific heat. So, you have to refer to the table and from that we have to get the relative pressure and based on the relative pressure you can calculate the second steps uh, and etcetera ok. So, you can find out that T 2 s ok. So, this is the uh, similar approach that we have taken in the previous tutorial. So, I am not doing that. So, T 2 s can be found as 564.9 Kelvin ok. Now, T 2 can be found out as ok. So, this is the T 2 s ok and uh, we can find out the enthalpy corresponding to this second state that is H 2, H 2 can be obtained as H 1 plus H 2 s minus H 1 upon eta c. Now, what is H 2 s? For this T 2 s you can find H 2 s and H 2 s is basically 570.26 kilo joule per kg ok. So, now you substitute this number here and then you can find H 2. So, H 2 you can obtain as 626.6 kilo joule per kg. So, next is that we have we can find out the uh, we can find out H 3 because temperature is given T 3 is 1240 Kelvin. So, correspondingly we can find out H 3. So, H 3 is 1324.93 kilo joule per kg and I can also find out P R 3 which is 272.3. Okay, so, next we can find out P r 4. So, P r 4 is basically P 4 over P 3 multiplied by P r 3 and then P 4 over P 3 is basically 1 over 10 and this is 272.3. So, you can find it as 27.23 and for this P r 4 you can find what is H 4 s. H 4 s is 702.07 kilo joule per kg and T 4 s can be found as 689.6 Kelvin ok. Now, we can find out H 4 that is the actual enthalpy. So, H 4 can be found uh, basically from H 3 minus eta turbine H 3 minus H 4 s so, that is the expression that we are going to use. We have already uh, seen previous examples. So, I am not writing all the steps. So, H 4 can be found as 783.04 kilo joule per kg. Now, correspondingly you can find what is T 4. So, T 4 you can find out as 764.4 Kelvin ok. So, heat transfer to the cycle is Q in which is basically H 3 minus H 2 and that is 698.3 kilo joule per kg and Q out is the heat transfer from the system rejection. So, H 4 minus H 1 and that is 487.9 kilo joule per kg. So, the net work output is Q in minus Q out and that is 210.4 kilo joule per kg and the thermal efficiency is net work output divided by the heat input which is nothing but 30.1 percent ok. So, this these are the solutions. Now, I will quickly go to the second part of the problem where it says 
determine the exergic destruction with each of the processes of the beta cycle. So, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 and 4 to 1, these are the processes that is taking place. We have to find out the exergic destruction during this process. Now, to begin with, we have some of the solutions from the from this problem, first, up, first part of this problem. So, we have T 1 which is 295 Kelvin and correspondingly you know S 1, S 1 is 1.68515 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Now, we have H 2 which is 626.6 kilo joule per kg and S 2 you can find as 2.44117 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. T 3 is 1240 Kelvin and S 3 is 3.21751 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Now, H 4 is known that is 783.04 kilo joule per kg correspondingly you can get S 4 which is 2.66807 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, these are the entropies that we have uh, I have already written. Now, the exergy destroyed between 1 and 2 process is T naught S gen between 1 to 2 right. So, T naught is the ambient temperature right which is uh, given here right. Uh, we have to assume that uh, surrounding temperature, surrounding temperature is uh, given as 310 Kelvin. Okay. So, T surrounding is basically 310 Kelvin. Okay. So, this is 310 and entropy generated can be written as S 2 minus S 1. Okay. So, due, uh, so, this is the change in the entropy okay, S 2 minus S 1. Now, due in, during the 1 to 2 process, okay, so uh, this is the exergy destroyed. Now, S 2 minus S 1 can be written as S 2 naught minus S 1 naught minus R log P 2 over P 1. Okay. So, S 2 naught and S 1 naught is basically uh, available to us. Okay. So, we can just plug in the number. Okay. So, these are the S 2 naught and S 1 naught and this will take care of the change in pressure. Okay. So, if I now substitute the numbers, so this is 310 and S 2 naught is 2.44 117 and S 1 naught is 1.68515 minus R, R is basically 0 0.287 and log of P 2 over P 1. So, P 2 over P 1 is basically 10 the pressure ratio. So, this will be calculated as 29.51 kilo joule per kg. So, that is between 1 to 2. Now, XRG destroyed between 2 to 3 processes T naught S gen 2 to 3 and that can be written as T naught S 3 minus S 2 plus. Now, during the 2, two to 3 process heat is transferred right. So, heat is transferred uh, from a let us say from a constant temperature source and that is 1600 maintained at 1600 Kelvin. Okay. So, here heat is transferred from this 1600 Kelvin source. So, this can be written as Q in divided by temperature T b in right. So, this is nothing but T naught is 310 Kelvin S 3 minus S 2. So, that is 3.21751 minus S 2 is 
Okay. Now, during this during this process, so there is no change in pressure. So, R log P 2 by P 1 that term will, will be basically it will not be 0, it, it will be 0 right, because pressure is same. So, log of 1 is basically 0. Okay. Now, what, what is the amount of heat that is transferred? So, heat is transferred to the system which is uh, basically, so the so heat is transferred to the system. So, I will just write it as a minus sign. So, this is minus uh, Q in we have already calculated as 698.3 and the temperature at which it enters is 1600 Kelvin. Okay. So, you can calculate the amount of extra destroyed is this one. Okay. Now, we will come to the third 3 to 4 stage uh, step. So, XRG destroyed between 3 to 4 is T naught S gen 3 to 4, which is nothing but T naught S 4 naught minus S 3 naught minus R log P 4 over P 3. Okay. So, I can now substitute the number this is 310 Kelvin S 4 naught we have written as 2.66. 807 and S3 naught we have written as 3.21751 minus R log R is 0.287 right. So, 0.287 and this is log of P4 by P3 is basically log of 1 over 10 right log of 1 over 10. So, you can calculate this XRG destroyed between 3 to 4 process is 34.53 kilojoule per kg. Now, coming to the last stage XRG destroyed between 4 to 1 you can see. Uh, so, this will be T naught S gen 4 to 1 which can be written as T naught S 1 minus S 4. plus whatever heat is rejected Q out and this is the temperature at which heat is rejected. Okay. So, now if you substitute this, this is T naught S 1 naught minus S 4 naught minus R log P 1 by P 4 plus Q out by T B out. So, now you substitute the number this is 310 Kelvin 1.68515 minus 2.66807. So, log of P 1 by P 4 will be 0 here and the amount of heat addition is 487.9 over 310. So, this will come out as 183.2 kilojoule per kg. So, what you can see that during the heat transfer processes you see that the maximum amount of XRG destroyed. Okay. So, here between 2 to 3 process which is a constant pressure heat addition you have seen 105.4 kilojoule per kg XRG destruction and now if you see 4 to 1 which is heat rejection there also you see it is about 183.2 kilojoule per kg. Whereas, in the isentropy whereas, in the compression and the expansion process you have a fairly small amount of XRG destruction. Okay. So, this is one of the problem of the uh, XRG in gas power cycles. So, I will close this tutorial and in the next tutorial we are going to look at uh, the Rankine cycle. Okay. We will do the analysis of the Rankine cycle, we will also study the effect of reheating and the regeneration in the Rankine cycle. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.